in terms of safety, security and, and livelihood. So that's the approach we're taking. Now the next question you can ask is, how do we get there? On paper this is okay, but then what are we doing to, to achieve it? So I hope all of you have heard one way or another, um, all of our leadership regularly talk about Pakistan's shift from a geopolitical to a geoeconomic paradigm. Uh, which is actually a transformation in terms of the thinking. Uh, for 70 years we've talked about our location as being our most important strategic dividend. Every time we talk about it, crossroads of South Asia, Central Asia. But if you think about it, in the past the location has actually brought, brought us global wars, proxy staging ground, Afghanistan is a very good example for the past 40 years. What we are looking at is how do we utilize our location as a geo-economic location? which has three pillars. Number one is connectivity. Given our location, if we can use where we sit to connect north, uh, south from north, westward and east theoretically, then you optimize the use of your location. So in terms of policy, you may have noticed a very strong shift towards Central Asia. That has been an area that we, has been closed for a long time, but you've seen I think two or three or four major visits, uh, including just last week by the Prime Minister, because Central Asia connected through Afghanistan down to our warm waters is by far the most economical route for Central Asia, gives Afghanistan a lot of transit um, fees, and of course Pakistan benefits tremendously. And that's why the Gawadar port becomes central. Second is CPEC. That's the North-South Corridor. Again, the idea is basically connecting China down to the warm waters for their global trade. And Pakistan becomes the transit territory. Too much is said about CPEC and strategic project and this project and that project. Basically, if you understand the overall umbrella, the vision, it's very clear what CPEC is trying to achieve, which is more infrastructure, more energy and transit uh, through Pakistan. That's essentially uh, uh, what, what it is. And then theoretically, we can also extend connectivity eastward. Unfortunately, that flank is, is closed uh, because of the kind of government attitude, behavior and trajectory uh, that India has. Uh, the current mindset of this government, the Hindutva ideology, etc., uh, there's very little rational uh, conversation that's possible. But theoretically, that also at some point can open up. So connectivity is the first pil pillar of this vision. The second one is development partnerships with the world. Not assistance. Of course, Pakistan will require assistance for the foreseeable future. How do we create real partnerships in terms of trade, investment, export, uh, FDI, and all of the rest? For that, of course, a lot has to be done internally as well. You know, investors are going to come. It's like osmosis. Wherever the, there's the path of least resistance, they will come. And so we have to ensure that that uh, particular aspect we improve on, but that's sort of how we are operating or interacting with the world. Now both these cannot be fulfilled unless a third element is in the mix, which is internal and regional peace. That is why you see so much effort going into ensuring the writ of the state across the board ensuring that you know there are no domestic fault lines that can be misused you've seen pakistan's counterterrorism performance alhamdulillah uh, since 2007 and where we are today um, and then regionally afghanistan is probably the best example even india frankly um, there is enough in the news to know that you know there, there was a conversation to see whether there's any way forward i'm disappointed to inform you that um, you know it's very unfortunate the direction today's India is going and what is happening there. 
uh, and the sooner the world opens their eyes to the fact that it has now become truly a regional threat uh, in the way that India is behaving and has a conflict with every single neighbor. Um, but anyways, we'll leave that for another day. Um, the Afghanistan peace is central to this because unless Afghanistan is stable, how do you get a corridor of connectivity from Central Asia down to our warm waters? And unless Afghanistan is stable, how do you actually extend the connectivity that Pakistan has through road, through infrastructure, through energy to Afghanistan? And so that's why in our sort of national security vision and this, this third element of peace, Afghanistan is critical. And I will come back to this. But just let me complete the thought of national security. So this is the economic security paradigm. The um, second part of this, which is human welfare, uh, you have seen everything from social safety nets to cash transfer programs, SRs, you know, tons of conversation. And I'll be honest with you, one of the reasons we've survived COVID without a negative economy, in fact, a, a growth economy, uh, is because of this sort of welfare orientation of, of the current government and the Prime Minister. Uh, so it's very, very serious about this, this Riyasati Medina concept. People, you know, say all sorts of things. It's, it's real. You can call it whatever you want, but the idea is this welfare orientation, a redistribution towards the uh, po uh, poorest Pakistanis. And the third element, of course, is military security. And I just want to make a very simple point here. For too long, this conversation has gone on. Pakistan spends this much or that much or whatever. Please name one other country to me which lives in a neighborhood where you've got a seven times larger neighbor with the history that we've had with India that lives with a neighbor that has been in turmoil for 40 years, non-stop, where three, uh, approximately four million refugees are still in Pakistan, where we've had to deal with terrorism. You know, there's so much talk about the last 20 years. And mind you, I have to tell you, the partnership with the US has been a two-way partnership and a very good one over the years. Pakistan has benefited tremendously. The US has benefited tremendously. But, you know, there is a question that comes to the mind uh, of the average person. مشیر قومی سلامتی ڈاکٹر مہید یوسف تقریب سے خطاب کر رہے تھے اسلام آباد میں ڈاکٹر مہید یوسف کا کہنا تھا کہ علاقائی صورتحال جو اس وقت بن رہی ہے اس میں پاکستان بڑا اہمیت کا حامل مشیر قومی 